Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on slug advancement with data migration. Thank you very much for taking the time and joining us. My name is Ali Reza Afkami and I'm product manager of RSLog. Prior to joining Rice Science in 2021, I've been working as a geotechnical engineer since 1998. Um, with me is Sarah, my colleague, lead developer of RSLog and the creator of OnSite app for field data collection. Okay. So in this presentation, we are going to talk about the major uh, features of RSLog for data migration. Please feel free to post your uh, questions. We are going to answer the questions towards the end of the webinar. You can also request a one-to-one -one, uh, meeting with us if you have a specific database or you want to discuss how you can join RSLog and, um, and, and essentially transfer all your data to RSLog, we can meet you and go through the details, take a look at your database and help you with that. Uh, any question, comments, please email us at rslogdemo at rightscience.com and we'll be happy to connect with you. So most of you are familiar with, uh, with Rock Science for over 25 years, we are bringing um, excellent and top of technology um, um, geotechnical tools to you. We are now a group of 80 engineers, designers, and software developers. Um, our programs are being used by more than 10,000 engineers. Um, head office in Toronto, we have different offices in different regions. Uh, one of the things that I always emphasize in terms of the way that we provide service and we um, develop and improve our products is that we are customer-centric. And those of you who have worked with me um, on RSLog in the past two, two and a half years, you know that your feedback is extremely important. That's the only way that we can improve our products. So please keep the communication line open, send us email, um, ask for features, and we'll be happy to get back to you and see how we can do that. Um, in terms of the collection of um, rock science software, uh, you are familiar with, uh, with uh, most of our products, I'm sure. A slide for slow stability, RS, um, two and three for finite element design. Um, RS log was added to our collection of programs um, back in 2022, um, more than two and a half years ago. And then Settle and RS Pile, one of the best programs you can have for your pile analysis, um, either lateral deflection or, or deflection or bearing capacity, make sure that you download and try RS Pile if you have not yet. Okay, so now moving to the ecosystem of rock science products, most of the programs talk to each other. And what it means is that you can export your data from one program and send it to another program when it comes to RSLog, RSLog is integrated with the slide and set in. So when I say integrated, that means if you have your borrow data in RSLog, if you have designed your cross sections in RSLog, then that is going to save you a lot of time um, when, when you are setting up your slide model or settle model. In a slide, the cross section will be pulled into your slide model and with Settle, the location of all the boreholes and the stratigraphy, everything will be directly transferred to your Settle uh, model. Switching to RSLog, a quick overview of what RSLog offers to you. Um, we talked about integration. We have um, an iOS Android app called OnSite, uh, which could be used during site investigation, drilling, or test fitting to collect data, it works online and offline. So make sure you give it a try if you if you are not aware of OnSite. It's a very good application. We just um, um, issued a new version of RS log that generates borehole logs in the field for you. Um, in terms of other features of RS log, web app, um, different data entry modules for project and boreholes and cross-section design and lab tests. Um, you can import your data from you know, different formats, including Excel, and also import from Gint. 
and Dix. Today, we are going to talk more about imports from, from Gint. So if you have an existing Gint file and you want to bring your data to RSLog, you will be able to do that. And in fact, any Microsoft Access database could be imported to RSLog. In terms of exporting, the cross-section could be exported to DXF and Civil 3D. Uh, the entire project and boreholes and cross-sections could be exported to Google S and more export formats. In terms of reporting, in addition to the borehole logs, we have um, um, the figures, uh, report figures, such as site location map and borehole location map or summary report, all of these are taken care of by RSLog. So we just try to save your time and have less back and forth with your drafting department. Um, and, and one of those things is, is the cross-section design. Um, if you refer to our previous webinar, you will see how um, it's, it's going to save your time. Okay, and then in terms of the tools that we offer in RSLog, template designer, which is you know the basic, you want the borrow logs to match your company style, and then lots of customizations on the settings page, and of course, user management, and you can easily um, add or remove users from your RS log, depending on who comes to your company and who leaves, and in terms of even access levels, you can control everything. A um, couple of reasons to switch to RS log, if you haven't yet, great cost saving, we're going to talk about the uh, promotion um, that we offer right now. Flexible licensing, so RS log is a web application and the only thing you need in order to access the program is just a user and password. And the license is flexible in a sense that we don't tie the license to a specific computer. So with the same user and password, you can log in from anywhere at any time. And then of course, the centralized database allows everybody to contribute to data. It could be using on-site, during data collection, different engineers on the same project, different drill rigs or on different projects. Um, and then unlimited borehole, we don't charge you based on boreholes. Uh, we don't have any limit on the number of boreholes that you can put in your RS log account, lots of customization, and of course, a comprehensive uh, help website. So RS log is essentially your best solution for borehole data management with the features that we provide. Um, all right, okay, so one last thing I want to show you is that from the beginning of your project, in terms of planning your site investigation, RSLog is with you. So we have features for um, a pre-investigation planner is, is for planning your upcoming um, site investigation. Instead of putting the locations on a Google map and, and just print it, you can put as much information as you have, including the location of those boreholes in RS log, this is going to save a lot of time during site investigation and using the on-site app. And then you generate the borehole logs. We have very nice features for review and, and approval of a borehole log in our September 26th um, deployment. We've brought a bunch of new features. Um, so now everybody in your team can review a borehole log. They can leave comments. They can they can. Um, address each comment, each review comment separately. They can approve, you can even lock the borehole data just to make sure it, that the data is not going to change after the project is wrapped up. And of course, the template designer is very easy, just drag and drop, set the properties and colors and font size and everything. Very easy to design your log templates. Cross-section design, um, we have a complete separate webinar um, last month about this, so you can you can refer to to the recording on on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, but this is extremely time saving feature for you instead of multiple back and forth with your drafting department and sending them and um, your you know pencil kind of design, uh, sending them the locations or measuring the distance between boreholes and elevations and scaling. So everything will be done here. Um, all those time-consuming parts are done automatically so that you can just focus on implementing your engineering judgment and just connecting the layers together, creating lenses, 
um, showing the contaminated zone, um, showing the utilities the way that you want, and and just export um, the whole design into DXF or Civil 3D or Google Earth. And of course, GIS system. GIS system is going to be helping you a lot with your new projects. So if you can also bring your old or historical project on borehole data, which today we are going to talk about, then if you have a new project, you want to create a proposal, you can just go to your GIS map and see how many projects you have in the vicinity of this new project and just um, optimize your cost estimate. Uh, if you know that you have 10 boreholes across the street, um, then, then maybe instead of uh, 15 boreholes for this project, you go with eight boreholes, right? And that will put you in a more favorable situation um, compared to the other um, companies pricing for the same project. And of course, data migration. Today, we are going to talk more about it. And then data exchange. So during the course of project, you can export your data. Say you want to export your SPT data and use it for soil liquefaction analysis or for pile design or anything. Uh, on every page of RS log, you have import from CSV and export to different formats. And here is some of the import features offered by RS log. You see, you see GINT and DIGS and, and, and other formats. Uh, this JSON format is our, um, um, our RS log essentially format for um, uh, collecting, uh, importing, and exporting data. So if, if um, you want to exchange data with, with an in-house program or a program that you are going to write, and you just need to go through that JSON format. It's very easy to, um, to understand the format and then different export uh, feature, um, export options, depending on which feature in RS log you are using. Okay, so with that introduction, let's focus on data migration features in, in RS log. And I always say, when you want to decide um, on data migration, because data migration is typically an expensive procedure because you have a lot of historical data. In some cases, 20 years, 30 years of data is going to be brought into your RS log database. So the first question is, do you want to only bring the locations of your boreholes? And, and believe me, a lot of consultants are happy with this. Why? Because once you have the location of your boreholes and projects, it puts you in a much better um, um, situation compared to the other consultants because now you can use the valuable data, which is your historical projects for your uh, future proposals and, and projects. You can always zoom to that area, figure out what's the project number and just go back to your network and plot the files, print the borehole logs, take a look at the data geology of the area and, and, and all that. So you have to make the decision. if. We want to bring the locations, it's much easier. If you want the entire data, stratigraphy, samples, field tests, lab test results, piezometers, um, discontinuities, and so on, that is going to be a bit more complex. You need um, a few more skills in order to do that, and you need a bit more time. So we are going to cover both of these options in today's webinar. And I'm starting with the the simpler option, which is importing the locations only. Now, the way that maps work, they need geographic coordinates, right? So to put a point on a map, you need to know the latitude and longitude of that point. It's essentially X and Y on planet Earth. So if I have that data, I can put the points on, on the map. Okay, so now, in terms of the location of each point, and when I say point, it could be a project, it could be a borehole. In terms of the location, it could be either the actual coordinate, latitude, longitude, or it could be the address. So you may have the list of all your uh, previous projects in an Excel sheet. You don't have latitude, longitude for them, but you have the address for each project. So that is, that is going to be helpful. And we'll see how. Oh. So if you have the actual coordinates, geographic coordinates, like in this example, 
you can just simply go to audits like GIS system and then go to external data tab and just import this data as a CSV file, right? So that's the only thing you need. Create that CSV file, come to RS log, import the data. If you have 2,000 records, it takes like five seconds. And all of your board and project locations are on the map, done. And you have full control on this data. So this data is going to be shown to you in RS log for edit if you want to remove a project or, or a point, or, or if you want to just change um, the data associated with that point, either the coordinate or a link, you want to add a link to it, so you, you have full control on that, on that data. The other option is if you have the points on a Google Earth file, and, and believe me, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of companies already done that. In fact, um, the, the company that I worked for before joining Rock Science, they had over uh, 4,000 projects in, in Vancouver area, and, and they put all of that data on a, a nice Google Earth map um, so that at any point they can just refer to that file and, and see um, um, you know, how many previous projects they have in that area, right? So if you, already, if you are one of those companies and already created your Google Earth file, the good news is importing it into RS log GIS system is just a few seconds, right? So again, you go there, you go to the upload file section, and um, you go to the import KML KMZ and just upload the file. That's it. So these, so th those cases that we covered was when you have the actual coordinate, right? So now let's see if you have the address, what are the steps to do that? Again, if you have them in, in an Excel file or CSV format, with the site location being one of the columns and you need the full address, including the city at least. So what you need to do, you need to go to RS log, GIS system, and again, to the same external data tab and just upload um, the data. But let's see what happens when you upload the data. We do geocoding on those addresses. So geocoding is the process of converting addresses to actual geographic coordinate because remember the maps need geographic coordinate needs they need latitude and longitude so we do it for you right so you can easily import the data upload the data we turn them into the points and just show the, show those um, locations on your GIS map it could be borrow locations it could be project locations right Okay, so now let's talk about importing from a database. And this is where it becomes a bit more complex. Um, you will need um, a little bit of background and understanding of database or how to work with databases. Your IT definitely knows, but these days a lot of engineers, um, they do programming and, and they're already familiar with, with database concepts. But what is database? Database is an organized collection of data. And typically, this data is saved in uh, tables and columns. So very similar to the way that you put your data in a, in a spreadsheet. Um, you have different worksheets. That think of them as tables, right? So you have different tables, and then each column carries a specific data, a specific purpose. Right, so you can have a boreholes table or worksheet, and different columns for uh, for coordinate, for depths, for uh, groundwater level, and so on. Uh, name of contractor, uh, drilling contractor, who logged it, who reviewed it. So those are different columns, right? So that's how essentially the data is stored in a database. You will see a lot of tables. Each table has a lot of columns, and each row. It's called a row or a record. Now, once you know the database, you also need to do the data mapping. And, and the process of data mapping 
is to connect or match the data structure in the source database, in this example, Gint, right, to the data structure in the destination database, in this case, RSLog. So once we know where to find each data, then RSLog, what, what the Gint import feature does essentially is that you, you do the data mapping and we just go to the right address, which is which table and which column. So we go to that address, read the data, bring it to RSLog, save it for him. And we do all of these in, in just a few seconds, depending on a few seconds to few minutes, depending on complexity of your in data structure, the number of tables, the number of records that you want to import. Typically, just one project is um, um, the data for one project is is in a GIN file. But but again, if you have two hundred boreholes, it's different from the case that you have only three boreholes. Um, but RSLog does all of that for you as long as you do. You help us with the with the data mapping. Okay, so we are going to go through the data mapping now and see a bit more about it. Now, here is an example of relationship in a, in a GIN file. Um, each of these cards are a separate table in, in this simple GIN file. And you see that we have just a few um, uh, tables here. And then these lines are, are the relationship between different tables. Um, think of relationship as um, some sort of um, um, properties or tags that connects different tables together. For example, um, this lithology table is connected to borehole with point ID. So it means that if you if you have the borehole name here, the same borehole name in this table um, connects these two and relates these two together. Relationship could be one to one, could be one to many, but those are those are the design of the database, design aspects of the database. But this is this is how inside the database looks. And I think I have another screenshot. So here is when you look at the actual data in one of those tables, like lithology table. Um, you see here, and this is these are the list of different different tables in this file, and then. Um, for that selected lithology table, these are different records. And you see that three of these records belong to one borehole, AH22-B. So look at the look at the columns or fields. Uh, we call them fields. So you see here point ID, which is the name of the borehole, and then depths of each um, borehole, uh, sorry, depths of each layer, because this is lit lithology table top and bottom depths, and then the, and the hatch graphic design or, or code, and then the description of the material in that, um, in that layer. So that's how a database looks uh, when you open the data to, to look at it. Okay, so in, in RSLog, uh, the process of importing a GIN file starts by uploading the file. So you simply go to the import page, click on upload or import, and then just upload your file. We process the file, it takes a few seconds. And then after that, you directly come to the um, data mapping page. In this example, we are looking at the projects mapping. And as you see, these are different uh, properties uh, for a project in RSLog. And the only thing you need to do for each of these properties, you need to map, you need to map it to your GINT um, um, data structure. In this example, like here, project number is mapped to project table and to project number column, right? So that this one is easy. And 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 a lot of these, when you upload your GINT file will be automatically detected. And it's because we are familiar with in data structures and, and you know, we, we take a guess based on our experience and you know, dealing with different GIN files, but it has the flexibility that if you want to bring a data from another table 
you just change the name of the table and, and select the, the column or field that, um, that uh, stores the data. So that's all you need. And, and as soon as you, you select the um, table and field, you see the actual value um, in this cell so that you, know, you, can, you can essentially verify and validate that, okay, this is the right table and column that, that I've selected. So very similar for, for other data entities like boreholes, for example, very similar in terms of locations. If locations are available for your borehole, being latitude, longitude, or easting, norting, uh, again, depending on coordinate system that you select for your project on the first uh, tab, on the projects tab. But you just continue by um, doing the data mapping uh, for for all of these different like filters, like all the filters, you can you can do data mapping separately for each of them. Now, the good news here is that once you complete this data mapping, you don't need to do it again. So at the at at your RSLog account level, we save that. So once you click on import data button, we save that data mapping in your RSLog account, right? So you don't need to do it again. You can even download it. So you can download from the footage gear, you can download your Gint um, mapping. And, it, and if need be, you can, if accidentally you change it or anything, you can upload the same setting in the future. Another thing you can do, you can even map the, um, the um, seed data or, or, or pick list. Um, a good example is, is sample. Sample types, right? So your GINT, GINT file may have different sample types from, or, or, or at least the text, the label of them might be different. But here you have the opportunity to uh, map um, sample types and drilling methods and, and lots of other um, uh, seed data together. So once once you uh, you are done with with data mapping, you click on import uh, import data. And uh, what RSLog does, it runs it in the background so that you can use the program in the meanwhile. You can generate logs and, and, and do reviews and uh, cross-section design, anything. And as soon as um, the data import from your GIN file is finished, you will see a notification here in your RSLog account. And, and then and that means the project from your GIN file, the project is added um, to your RS log account, and you can easily go and access the data, generate borehole logs based on your new log templates, and and in the future you will be able to use them in the in in the cross section design. So remember, any data, including OCR feature, um, gain feature, import from CSV, anything, if you have the locations, the actual coordinates, we are going to automatically add them to the GIS. So right after Gint. Uh, import, you can go to RSLog GIS and you'll see um, the boreholes in there. Okay. Now, um, another feature that, that um, RSLog offers for data migration is the, the new OCR feature. So this feature came out in, in July and and it's, it's very exciting for, for a lot of um, consultants who have a lot of historical data in paper format. Just, just think about that. We have a lot of inf um, old infrastructures in the US alone. There are more than 92,000 dams and 600,000 bridges that are older than 50 to 60 years. So immediately, what comes to mind is that, okay, so at that time, there was no um, software, you know, to use for borehole logging. So in most cases, you have the borehole logs in paper format, right? So how about just turning these paper borehole logs into some real RS log borehole data? So the, the main advantage of doing the doing this is that it can optimize, it can reduce the cost of um, additional site investigation because all of these projects are going uh, are, are going to need some sort of upgrade or repair or additional site geotechnical investigation anyway. 
right? So this way, you know that the data is always in your database. You can easily access them and uh, and bring them into your design. You know, use the SVT data, use the um, soil layering in your in your subsurface model, and just um, um, have more data to work with. All right. So this part, um, I'll ask Sarah, my my colleague, to take over and show you a quick demo of OCR. So I'll just be going through um, OCR on the RSLog website to give you a sense of how to use it, how it works, and um, the possibilities of using it with your data. So if you're on rslog.com, um, you would just start the OCR by going to the sidebar here where it says OCR and then scan pages. So this should be at the top um, right here with this new tag. And you want to start with scan pages. So this is the page where everything relating to OCR happens. So generally with the OCR, the way it works is that you will upload your borehole log PDFs. You'll create a template to match a specific page of your borehole logs. And then that template can be matched to other pages that have the same structure. So the idea is you take the time to create one template and then it could be really easily used to apply to many different files and many different formals. So you can quickly extract data without having to do extra work. So today I'll just be going through how you would do this and create a template. So on the scan pages, we have this table here, which just shows you all the PDFs you have previously uploaded. uploaded. So you can see I have um, a few with different statuses. So the status missing template just uh, shows that you need to create a template for this file. We have templates matched, so that means there are templates matched to each page and it's ready to extract. And then we have the complete files where boreholes have been extracted. So essentially, after you import your logs, you can use the status and the action steps to know what to do next for specific files. And another thing to note here is we have on the top right these page credits remaining and in use. So essentially, once you import a log, um, your credits will be used up depending on the number of pages you select. And then when you actually create a borehole, that's when the credits will go from in use to fully used up. So at any point before you create the boreholes, you can change things or remove the files and that doesn't fully use the credits. So if you want to start by importing a log, click this button here, import borehole logs. So here you would choose first the destination project. So this is just where the boreholes are going to go once they're created. So you can create a new project from the log data, select an existing project, or create a new project with this button here. And then you would select the borehole logs. So you just upload any PDF you want, and then select the page range that you want to extract from. And when you're done, click Import. So I already have a file here that I imported that's missing a template. So it's missing two pages that don't have templates attached to it. So if we go into action steps, this create or assign templates button is what you want to click. And depending on what is available for you to click, that kind of uh, shows you what to do next. So at this stage, we're going to be creating a template for this file. Um, and I'll just go be going through the process of that. So this is the first page when you're creating a template. So you need to first confirm the depth section lines. So this is just trying to section off the PDF so that our guesses on where the information is located is more accurate. So you can hover over these labels here to see which lines are chosen. And you're gonna wanna choose lines to segment the header, the column header, the column section, and then the footer. So you can use this on the PDF just to see what's correct and then also look at the lines here. If a line is incorrect, because these are guessed with our um, AI backend, then you could just click a line and select the correct one here. But these are all correct, so we're gonna just click Confirm Lines. So right now we're gonna be getting the guesses to the uh, type of information on the page. So as you can see, we have the left sidebar with all the guess information, and then on the PDF, you could see the guesses and you could interact with the PDF to change the information selected. So at this stage, we just want to look through the information that was automatically selected. We want to correct it and add anything missing. So to do that, we can hover over specific words on the PDF. So it'll just show you um, the dark blue shows the label information and the light blue shows the value information. And then you can also hover over the columns. As well, you can see the information in the left sidebar. 
So first we want to create a new template. So you would just uh, add a title for the template and then we're gonna wanna go down here to look at the guesses. So first we wanna create new project data. So we'll just uh, select information of the coordinate reference system and then the unit system. And then we'll go down here to look at the guesses. So as you can see, we have the RS log field corresponding here and then the label and value guesses. So for this field, you can hover over the field name to see where it's located and then quickly see if it's all the information is correct. And because it is, we'll move down to borehole information. So you can do the same thing here. And then you can see that end date and start date don't have quite have the correct value information. So we're gonna wanna correct that right on the PDF. So in the left sidebar, you can clear the selection or you can clear it actually on the PDF by clicking a word. And then we're just gonna to wanna to select the word information for this type of field. So we're gonna select start date, value here. And then you can also select multiple words at once by holding shift, or you can drag and select multiple information like this. So there are a few ways to make this process quick and easy. As well, if there's information here that is in the PDF, but you don't see, you can click add data. So this just shows all the RS log fields you have available to you. Um, for example, we can add logged by, and then you can also remove things that uh, were assigned, but shouldn't be in the PDF. So for logged by, we have the correct information for value, but we need the information for label. And you can see the orange beside logged by here that shows that that's missing. So we would just click the word, click log by and click label. So if that information is all correct, we would move down to the log columns. So again, this is very similar. You would hover over the sidebar and see if this information is correct. So you can see we don't have depth selected, but we want this column. And you can see that this column is segmented into two. So we also have this option to add a column separator. And basically if one column has multiple types of data and no separator line, we can add that ourselves by just placing it on the PDF and then selecting the column as depth. As well, we can go over the additional information to see what's correct. So you can see we have a little bit of information chosen for these graphs. So we currently don't have, don't support graph data, it's just technical text data. So we would just remove this kind of information, unassign here, or you can unassign uh, in the sidebar as well. So uh, we wanna go through and also correct all of this. So for example, we don't have drill runs, so we can remove that. And we wanna switch moisture percent to this column. So we would just click the column, click moisture percent and select that. And then a few other small pieces of information here. So we have the option to edit the column header words. So these are automatically selected, but if there's words that we don't want in the column header, we can remove them here. And that just means it will translate from page to page and it's able to um, detect from other pages. So for example, comments, we have specific Easting Northing information here. We would wanna remove that just to show remarks. So this uh, translates from other pages. And as well, the column cr criteria option, this is just because uh, columns can have multiple pieces of data in them and we wanna be able to extract the specific data we want. So for depth, if you have something like depth and elevation, you can signal which data we wanna extract. So then once you're done selecting all this information for all of the logs and all of the label value information, you would click save and next. Save and next basically creates the template and then applies this template to every page in this file and also all the other files you have um, already uploaded. So it will be able to, if all of the pages are the same in this file, which they are, it would translate to all these specific pages and then you would be done for this file. So if we go back, I already have completed a template for this file down here and have created the boreholes for it. So once templates are matched, you would have this template match status and then you would click create more holes here. And then you can also review or reassign the match template templates to specific files just to make sure everything is okay. So then once you have a complete file, you can view that here with this button, see all boreholes, or you can review the OCR history to see the boreholes created. So if we want to see the new boreholes, we would just click this button and then it brings us to this page with all the new boreholes. 
And then we, if we go into a specific one, we can see that we have information like reviewed by, logged by, extracted, the depth, start and end date. And then we, if we go into samples, we have all these samples records. We have a field test value. We have one comment, and then we have the stratigraphy information. So all of these boreholes that were extracted with the with OCR are tagged as OCR, so they're easily identifiable. And then we also have this button here, open OCR log. So at any point, if you're looking at this information, you can refer back to the specific log used to create it. So then once you're done, you can upload other specific files. And if it matches this template, it will automatically be assigned it. And then you can just click create four holes to finish that. As well, if you want to edit a template, you can go to Template Manager and you can select Templates to view, edit, or potentially delete. So overall, this is the entire process of creating boreholes from a specific PDF file and free, feel free to ask questions at the end. So I'll pass it back to Ali Reza for the rest of the presentation. Okay, so um, so that was, that was the OCR. So I, I encourage you, um, to try the OCR feature, if you have an RS log account, you would have 50 pages of credit. And I see a question about um, OCR credit. So it's essentially the number of pages that you can uh, process with the, with the OCR feature. Um, everybody has 50 pages by default, but you can purchase more if you want. This 50 is just meant to allow you to essentially go through the trial, you know, um, just just try a few of your boreholes and and see how the program works. Uh, we are open to sit down with you if you have any questions or if you have um, problems um, making it work for your template for your logs. We can always set up um, a meeting with you. Now, one thing that I want to emphasize is with the OCR feature. Once you process the template and, and essentially like like those pages, the process that Sarah showed us. Once that process is done for a certain template, you don't need to do it again because that template is going to be added to your um, RS log account. And then from that point on, you can just start uploading more and more PDFs with the same template. And this time, it's just going through the data, extracting data. Um, there is no need to go to the template design page. And most comp companies, I think, don't have like more than five, six, most likely templates. So um, that should be a process that is uh, over time, you can bring more and more templates and, and finish the design. Okay, so um, so the way that the way that OCR works, as you uh, uh, saw in the, in the presentation, is that you need to scan your old paper borehole logs into PDFs, and then you upload the PDFs into the OCR feature. And then those borehole logs will be turned into actual borehole data in your RS log database. So it will be added to your RS log um, account. Now, there is, there is another way that you can have full control on data migration, and that is the use of APIs. So APIs are essentially a set of rules or protocols or just functions that allow communication between two different programs, right? And in this case, the way that it's used is that um, if, you, if you know programming, and these days a lot of engineers do Python or C Sharp or essentially any programming language, you can directly connect to your database, whatever that database is. You know, it could be Microsoft Access, it could be Gint, it could be another database, it could be just a simple CSV file, right? So as long as you know programming, you connect to, it could be your IT team, you know, have the skills there. So you just you just open and, and communicate, connect to the database of your projects and boreholes, read the data, soil layers, lab tests, field tests, anything that is important to you. And then use RS-like APIs 
to write this data into your RSLog account. So similar to OCR, in OCR feature, we do it for you. We go and pick the data from paper borrow logs, but in API, you read the data from your database and you just write it into your RSLog account. This way you have full control on what type of data should be coming to um, to your RS log account and to what level of details. You know, maybe you don't need um, to bring the Pisaner data. You know, you, you're just looking for the grandmother data and the general borrow data with its stratigraphy. So it's up to you. You just use those APIs that work for you. So that's also an option. If you want, please contact us and we will be happy to go through the API documentation with you um, and give you access. Okay, so the last slide, and then we, we move on to the to the questions. Um, so we'll have, um, so, so far, I mean, since February 2022, when we released the first version of RSLog, um, generally every four to six weeks, we've had an update. And I think this is extremely important. We've always, try to keep this ongoing and, and we always do that in the future. The reason is um, we, we are getting more and more feedback. Users are asking, um, users asking for improvement or new features. And, and that's the only way that we can make RSLog a better program for you. Uh, for example, on September 26, we added nested pisometer. Um, we added um, discontinuities. Um, um, summary of discontinuity and defect uh, properties, and a bunch of other features um, at like frozen soils, for example, um, ASTM classification for frozen soils. And, and more is coming to RS log. One of the things that we're working on is lab test, because we know that uh, users are asking for lab test processing. Lab test data is already there in RS log. You can always import your lab test results, but uh, lab test processing coming soon. Um, communicate with us um, if if you if you have some you know questions about lab test processing or or ideas or um, um, feature requests please um, contact us and then in terms of the pricing um, um, we are running a promotion right now if you want more than five um, users you will get forty percent discount and if you want more than ten users um, you will get uh, up to fifty percent discount. One thing I want to mention is that we have free viewer users. So for any um, any user that you purchase for your RS log account, you will be given also one free viewer user who can just log in into into your RS log account and see the data. It could be your management level or or a contractor or client. Maybe they want to see the data, but they're not going to change anything, right? So we can help you with, uh, with with that if you want a customized kind of uh, pricing based on the number of users, please contact us and we'll be happy to help into your... Okay, thanks very much for your time. We go through questions, but I just uh, say that again, if you have any questions, if you want to meet with us and um, you know we can take you through all RS log features, or maybe specifically talking about data migration, please email demo rslog at rockscience.com.